In this video, I'm going to show you a really nice way of simulating the loop gain of a feedback amplifier, which is a very important parameter for um, determining the stability and um, well, reducing the sensitivity of a feedback system to, um, to uh, things like the, the gain of the amplifier. Um, and um, we're going to do this using X scheme and uh, and NG spice. So, uh, and our test vehicle is going to be the current mirror differential amplifier that uh, we've been working on. So, let's go into documents, CM diff amp, and I have set up a schematic based on our AC simulation, prior AC simulation. And it's called CM diff amp loop gain. And so uh, I've, I've modified my original um, follower connected current mirror diff amp as follows. I have made a second copy of the circuit up here. I still have the two picofarad load capacitor. And this, uh, the purpose of the second copy of the circuit is to um, establish um, the quiescent operating point of uh, the amplifier. And so uh, in order to do that, uh, I've got a secondary bias current source here um, because we have to pull out the bias current from the, the replica amplifier here explicitly. Um, and in the... Uh, actual amplifier, I've inserted in the feedback loop this little T connection of three voltage sources. Okay, so um, this one right here is a dependent source, um, and the value of the dependent source is basically just the voltage on the output of the uh, replica amplifier. So this, this output voltage is basically uh, copied by this dependent source to this node here. And then we've got two AC sources, um, one right here that's kind of going in the forward direction around the loop, and one here that's uh, going the opposite direction, the reverse direction around the loop. So I've called this one V1, I've called this one V2, and they have zero volts DC, and the AC magnitude is given uh, for the first voltage source in terms of a parameter called B as one minus B, and for the second one, the, the amplitude, the AC amplitude is given by the parameter B. And B is a parameter which I'm going to set initially equal to zero. And so um, when B is equal to zero, V1 has a magnitude of one volt. And then later, I'm going to alter the B parameter to set it equal to one for the second AC simulation. And in that case, one minus one is zero, so V1 is gonna have a magnitude of zero um, for the AC simulation, the second AC simulation, whereas V2 is gonna have a magnitude of one. Okay, so there's gonna be two AC simulations. The first one we're going to inject a signal into the loop here while we maintain this uh, this voltage here at the quiescent point. And then in the second one we're going to inject a signal kind of in the backwards direction around the loop and maintain this point here at the quiescent operating point. And it turns out that uh, the loop gain of the system, which conceptually is, is basically given by you break the loop someplace, you inject a test signal, you chase it around the loop, and the magnitude and phase um, that appear at the, the other end of the break is the loop gain of the system. In practice, it's very difficult to actually get that right because by breaking the loop, you uh, may uh, upset the DC operating point of the circuit. You may also, uh, depending on where you break the loop, um, 
affect the loading of the circuit. And so uh, it's actually quite a tricky thing to get the, a proper loop gain simulation. So this method is called the Z method, and it uh, was published maybe about five or six years ago now by a gentleman by the name of Augustin Ochoa. It's a, it's a really nice technique for simulating the loop gain of a system in SPICE. And so what, what the actual loop gain is uh, given by is uh, this formula right here. Okay, so it's the um, magnitude of the current in this voltage source due to the excitation in this one, plus the magnitude of the current in this voltage source due to the excitation in this one in the second simulation, all divided by the sum of the current in this voltage source due to itself, plus the voltage source, but plus the current in this voltage source due to itself, um, and so. Uh, that's what this, this line here computes. I of V2 from the first AC simulation plus I of V1 from the second AC simulation divided by I of V1 from the first simulation plus I of V2 from the second simulation. And then, um, and that is loop gain. So the way that this, the way that this little uh, control script here works is that first of all the parameter B is equal to zero. We do our first AC analysis with B equal to zero and we're sweeping here with 20 points per decade logarithmically from one hertz up to a terahertz and then we alter the parameter B and set its value equal to one. We have to issue the reset command in order for that parameter adjustment to take effect. It basically sort of reinterprets the circuit that's been read in with this new parameter value. Then we're doing a second AC simulation, again over the same identical frequency range. That's important because if we do it over a different frequency range, then this computation here will not make any sense. And then we're going to make a new plot, which if you remember in ng spice, uh, a plot is a group of vectors. And so we're going to define the loop gain in its own uh, set of vectors uh, independent of the two AC simulations that we've run. Okay, so we're going to import the frequency, which actually should be the same from the first and second AC simulations. And um, the first vector that we define in this plot will become the scale. There's a way to set the scale, which is the x-axis, um, but by just making the frequency vector the first one that we import into this new plot, um, uh, we make that the scale. And then we're going to compute t, which is the customary symbol for the loop gain, as this ratio of the cross currents, the sum of the cross currents divided by the self currents. And then we're going to let T mag be uh, basically the magnitude of T expressed in dBs. And we're going to compute the phase as 180 times the continuous phase of T divided by pi. So here T is a complex number. These, uh, these currents are complex real, with real and imaginary components. And so T is also going to be complex. And so it has a magnitude and phase. And we're going to want to plot those as like a Bode plot. And so then this plot basically uh, will plot the magnitude and phase of T on the same scale, um, semi-log and X. That's what this X log here is. And then from there, um, it'll drop us out into the interactive interpreter prompt in ng-spice, and we can save the waveforms, and uh, we'll see how that works. Okay, I guess I should also mention um, that this, this method of, doing, of uh, computing the loop gain or simulating the loop gain this would also be something that you could do analytically if you wanted to, um, is related, um, is directly related to the idea of node fixing and source splitting um, that we discussed in, um, in circuits. And so that's, that's kind of a longer story, which I haven't kind of worked out all the details on yet, but um, it, is, it, is, it does have very much the flavor of source splitting and uh, superposition and um, and node fixing here. We're fixing this node here, and then we have this, this sort of little uh, perturbation on top of this DC, uh, and we're, we're basically considering sort of a 
We've split the source into two replicas and we're considering currents in one due to the other in, in a sequential manner that relies on superposition. So it has that feel of node fixing and source splitting and superposition to it. And I think it is actually quite closely related to them. OK, so let's see how this works. Netlist and simulate. And there's our loop gain. Again, this is perhaps not the best way to plot this on the same scale, um, but uh, for the for the present purposes, it, it's fine. So this red curve here is the magnitude of the loop gain, and we can see it starts up here at low frequencies at about oh I don't know 35 decibels or so. And um, that's consistent with the kind of uh, slope we were seeing before. I think the gain from the voltage transfer characteristic was maybe something like 100. Uh, that was like 57, I think. And if you work that out, that seems like it's probably about 35 or 36 dBs. And then it starts rolling off here. And this is where it crosses the 0 dB line. This is called the unity gain crossover frequency. And we can see that that's just about, oh, I don't know, maybe around 700 kilohertz in this case. And um, the value of the phase at the unity gain crossover frequency turns out to be quite an important um, measure of stability for a feedback system. It's called the phase margin of the system. And um, the actual phase margin is the difference between the phase and minus 180 degrees. And so for this particular amplifier, if you actually look at this, I think it winds up to be about minus 90 or maybe minus 91 degrees. And so that's going to be, um, that's going to be about uh, 89 or 90 degrees of phase margin, which indicates a, a basically a first order type response uh, for, the, for the system. You can see that there's a second pole so this is like a 20 dB per decade roll off, and there's a second pole out here someplace, maybe around here, at about, um, uh, I don't know, 20, uh, 20 megahertz, and then the phase starts kicking down. And the idea is that you want to be well away from 180 degrees of phase shift um, when, the, when the magnitude of the loop gain gets below uh, one because if if you have 180 degrees of phase shift at that frequency what was a negative feedback connection at low frequencies with that 180 degrees of phase shift now is multiplied by minus one and is a is positive feedback and if the magnitude of this loop gain is bigger than one um, at that frequency you wind up with an unstable system um, that's kind of the intuition, and maybe we'll develop that a little bit more a little bit later on in the course. There is a second um, measure of stability, which um, is called gain margin. And that is um, when the phase gets to minus 180, which would be around here at, uh, looks like 30 megahertz in this case, uh, how far below the zero dB line is the gain? And so here, it looks like the gain is minus 40 dBs, and that would be our gain margin, 40 dBs of gain margin. So we have 91 or 90, 89 or 90 degrees of phase margin here, and about 40 dBs of uh, gain margin. So this is actually quite a quite a stable system. Okay, so that's that's the loop gain plot. Uh, if we wanted to export the data, 
Uh, we would do that in the same way that we discussed uh, in the last video. We can use the, the wr data command to write the data out to an ASCII file. In this case, we could use the uh, set wr single scale and set wr uh, vec names, let's say. And uh, then we go wr data, and then the name of the file. We can call this cm diffamp loop gain dot txt and we will write t mag and t phase and so if we pull up a uh, second terminal window here this will wind up being in our uh, x scheme simulations directory and there it is right there cm diffamp dot loop gain or underscore loop gain dot text and so if we do less cm Defamp loop gain dot txt. We have three columns, so this is the frequency, that is the scale that gets written out in the first column, and then the magnitude of the loop gain in uh, dBs, and the phase of the loop gain in degrees. And again, if we wanted to, we could um, import this into. Um, LibreOffice Calc, and um, let's see, dot x scheme simulation cm diffamp loop gain dot text. If we open with other applications, there's LibreOffice Calc. And if we include spaces and maybe trim spaces, we can import this into LibreOffice Calc and if we wanted to we could delete this column and then if we wanted to save this as a CSV file that would be a very easy way of getting a CSV file. We could edit the filter settings And maybe take out the quotations around the uh, column headings. And now we have a nice CSV file that has the the uh, names of the vectors and their the values are separated by commas and so it would be very easy to import this into Python or uh, into MATLAB or whatever um, your favorite uh, plotting analysis tool is to make a maybe a nicer plot than we get out of ng-spice directly. So uh, that's it for this. Um, hope it was uh, interesting and useful and uh, we'll uh, thanks for watching.